Want to learn what's new with dental products and services? Come join us. Welcome, everybody, to the Digital Trade Show Dental Podcast, where I am sitting down with the amazing people in the industry and having them talk about their companies, their products, their why, their outlook on the future, all kinds of exciting things, and maybe even some things about them that you didn't know. I'm your host, John Stamper, and thanks for joining me. This episode of the Digital Trade Show Dental Podcast is brought to you by TSIS, one of the nation's leading providers of payment processing services. Whether you need a secure payment gateway, an easier way to set up payment plans for those patients that want to get the dentistry done but don't always have the funds up front, or a time-saving system to automatically post your credit card payments to your practice management software system at the end of the day, they have it. So it's one thing for me to come on here and list all the things that they do. It's a whole other thing to meet them in person and see it in action. So that's what I did. Got in the car, drove down to Charlotte, North Carolina. I got to spend a couple of days with their leadership team, all of their members that are speaking with dental practices all over the country. I got to listen in on some of the phone calls on some of the things that the dental practices need and really watch how they handle that whole situation. I was really impressed by their vision, but most importantly, how they have taken payment processing and humanized it. So I really encourage you to go check them out and learn more about some of the innovative solutions they are providing in this space. And right now, I'm really excited that for all of my listeners, they are making available a $300 activation credit to anybody that signs up for their service. Now, this is the equivalent to the cost of the machine for an entire year. One of the things that I also was impressed with is that how many times have you been using a practice management software system and you were using your merchant processing with that, and then you had to switch and you had to use the merchant processing system that came with that practice management software? doesn't work like that with Tesis, and I think that's what's awesome is they're very, very flexible, and they've built their systems to be able to plug and play with whatever it is that you have in your practice. Another great thing, no contracts. So if you want to take advantage of this awesome activation credit that they're making available, just call 844-545-6255. That's 844-545-6255. They've got a great team there answering questions from dental practices all over the country. Go ahead and let them know that you heard about them on John Stamper's Digital Trade Show Dental Podcast, and they will be sure to answer any questions you have specifically about your payment processing and any and all the needs that you have around that very important part of your business. Be sure to mention the activation credit. And once again, the phone number is 844-545-6255. What's going on, everybody? Happy 2019, and welcome to the Digital Trade Show Dental Podcast. I am very excited as I look out towards the first part of this year to bring to you this podcast series in conjunction with Dental Consultant Connection. So towards the end of last year, I got the wonderful opportunity. I was introduced to Robin Morrison, who started Dental Consultant Connection, and we got talking and was learning more about her company and what she does. And it was very fascinating to me that there would be an organization that had pulled together coaches and consultants, all with their own unique expertise and focus. Focus, and then have them there and available based on the needs of a dental practice. I love the idea. Uh, as so many of you know, the decision to bring somebody into your practice, regardless of what they do, can be a very overwhelming decision. There's a lot of things to think about, and not one person uh, knows anything and everything. And so, certainly, having the ability to be able to have focused experts in specific needs of your practice really is a cool idea. And so I thought that it would be helpful to bring on each one of the team members from DCC on a weekly basis. And so Robin and I talked about this and we thought we'd put together a podcast series to get the year started. And the theme is practice strategies for the startup and the season. So what we're going to do is each week, we're going to have one of her team members come on. We're going to start with uh, having them come on the uh, Dental Cast Productions Facebook page on the I've Got 
got 10 video podcasts and have them just share 10 minutes worth of a couple of tips for the startup practice and or the seasoned practice. And then we'll have them come here on the Digital Trade Show Done Audio podcast and have them share a little bit more about themselves, their story. As many of you know, that is something I'm very, very passionate about. I love people's stories. I think it is the one thing sometimes that is the difference between any consumer making a decision on what they choose to purchase is knowing a little bit more about that person. And certainly, uh, if we can do that and we can showcase uh, so many of the great personalities and people in dentistry and have them come on and share their story, it makes it a little bit easier uh, when it comes to making that decision on the product or service that you want to purchase. So... I am very excited, as we said, to get this thing started. Uh, Robin was very gracious to have one of her team members come on once a week, and we're looking forward to where this goes, but more importantly, providing great content for you, the dental professional, that you can take a couple tips here, a couple tips there, uh, apply in your practice, but more importantly, if you want to take advantage of some of these great resources uh, that Robin has available and the people that she's working with at DCC would love to have you reach out to Dental Consultant Connection. Dot com. Learn more about them, learn more about the great consultants, and I will certainly do my best here on a weekly basis to showcase their talents, learn more about their stories, and most importantly, always try to provide great content for you as you listen in your busy schedule. So without a further ado, here is this week's episode, Practice Strategies for the Startup and the Seasoned. All right, everybody, I'm going to hop right in here on the Digital Trade Show Dental Podcast. Very excited to have Manal Simpat with me this afternoon. How are you doing, Manal? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, John? I'm wonderful. Uh, it's kind of interesting because we just finished a video podcast on Facebook, and now here we are again recording an audio podcast. You know, it's the, it's the world of podcasts. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. Well, what we wanted to do certainly is we're going to have the video podcast out there, um, this podcast series with Dental Consultant Connection and things like that, and bringing on each week an individual expert. Um, Manal does so much on the marketing or whatever the case may be, and she's going to talk here on the audio podcast a little bit about what we did on video with some tips for the startup in the season. However, in traditional digital trade show fashion, I love sharing people's stories. Uh, I think it adds so much to the service and the work that they're doing in the dental space. And so I wanted to have Manal come on and, and talk to you a little bit about her story so you can know a little bit more about her and I think more importantly, how she got to, to where she is. So Manal, the, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. You know, when people ask me about my story, I'm always a little hesitant because I, I do have a really long story, but I'll try to make it, <laughs> I'll try to make it short. Uh, I, so you know, I'm, I'm Indian. I was born in India. I grew up in the Virgin Islands. In Thomas. And for whatever reason, in 2008, my family, uh, you know, for whatever reason, I decided, hey, you know, in 2004, see, I'm already getting confused. I was born in India, lived in the U.S. Virgin Islands, in St. Thomas, and then in 2004, I went to New Jersey, to Rutgers University, to go to college. So I left the beautiful sunshine island of St. Thomas with 85-degree weather all year long to New Jersey the cold and the snow and oh man did I hate that but I was uh, <laughs> I was there I went to Rutgers University and I studied communication and biology I was not sure if I wanted to do dentistry or if I wanted to do business and as a sophomore I was a part of the pre-dental club and in order for you to be in pre-dental club you had to shadow a dentist so I remember putting my profile together you know kind of like a CV together and like faxing it. Remember faxing? I was like, I faxed it to all these uh, <laughs> <single> practices <laughs> to go shadow them. That was in 2006. And this really great practice, a uh, pediatric orthodontic practice in New Jersey, a pretty big practice with, you know, with over 20,000 patients. They said, come on in, Manal. We, we want you to come in and shadow us. And I think I had to shadow for like a certain amount of weeks. I think it was five weeks or something. And I didn't have a car when I was in college. Uh, you know, I used to work jobs. I, I'm, I'm pretty, when it comes to work ethic, I've been working since I was uh, a teenager. So, you know, work has been a part of my life. So I didn't want to buy a car until I was sure that I would need a car. Right. Um, and I shadowed there and I got there and did all these things. I loved the team there. I loved the doctors there. And again, it was a team of about 50 people. So big team, one location, big practice. And when I was leaving, they were like, you know, we want you to come work for us. So as soon as you decide what you want to do with your life, and as soon as you are done with college, just call us. 
And when I finished college, I still wasn't sure if I wanted to do dentistry. Secretly, I always loved business and marketing, but I also grew up being like, I should be doing something in, in, you know, in the healthcare field. So I, I called them, I called this office, and I'm like, hey, it's Manal, remember me? And uh, I am available now. I am a graduate, and I need, I need a job. And I graduated <laughs> in 2008 at the height of recession. So I graduated when my friends had no jobs. I graduated when jobs were hard to come by. So you bet I was calling, you know, I was pulling up every card. Anybody who has ever offered me a job, I was calling them and saying, Hey, I'm free. I'm a, I can work for you. <laughs> so this practice, obviously my heart sank when the office manager said, Hey, no, we have no positions open for you, but why don't you do this? Come on over at this time and let's, you know, let's talk. So the time she gave me was some lunch time for the doctor. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go have lunch with them. They're wonderful people. That'll be great. So I show up, you know, looking nice, but not looking professional for an interview. I show up in jeans and a nice top, you know, looking decent, but not an interview, not a, not a suit or, you know, uh, all of that together. Well, the next thing I know, I'm in the office and I'm being interviewed by the office manager and, uh, you know, she, she, she interviews me. She leaves for a couple of minutes. Then she comes back and she's like, well, we want you in our practice. We have no idea what you're going to do. We have no open position for you, but we just want you to be a part of our practice. So we're just going to figure out where you fit in. And there I was, you know, they trained me in, uh, they trained me in welcome desk. They trained me in insurance. I was doing scheduling. I was in the lab. I was doing all these things. And here's the cool part. Because I have a degree in communication and I grew up in the social media world, my first year in college was 2004. That's when Facebook was launched. So I grew up with Facebook when Facebook was literally a photo of your face. Um, <laughs> so, you know, and I know Zanga and AIM and MSN Messenger, like that, that was all norm to me growing up. So I took it and I said, you know what? I started looking into their marketing and I said, hey, we can, we can do so much more here. And I started taking over everything they were doing. And our new patient numbers kept increasing and increasing and increasing. And the dentist that I'm working with, uh, he's an uh, international speaker, very well known in the community. And, you know, we had the ADA, the AAPD calling him saying, hey, what are you doing for marketing? What's going on? Uh, and so one day, the, the New Jersey Association, like a local, local, you know, in New Jersey said, Hey, why don't you come in and do a marketing, marketing chat, like a CE, two hour marketing course? And he told me, he looked at me and he's like, well, you do my marketing. So I volunteered you. So you're going to be what the one speaking <laughs> in front of all the people and teaching them marketing. Well, like anything that happens with your first time, I was not as lucky with this, with this one because it was raining that day. I was wearing like a jacket, a suit. It was raining that day. I got completely drenched. And as a new speaker, I had no idea that I would have to bring in a connector for my Mac, for the, for the projector. I had no idea that I should also back up my PowerPoint onto a flash drive in case that doesn't work. I had no idea that I should also have a printout of my presentation in case nothing works. Well, everything went wrong. I am completely drenched. I'm a 20-something-year-old girl. There is a room full of dentists who are expecting me to do a two-hour lecture. First of all, they're expecting the doctor to do a lecture, and out of a sudden, there's this young girl who's going to teach her stuff. What's going on? <laughs> and she's, you know, wet. It's raining outside. I walk in. I'm like, okay, okay. I, I have my computer. Let's do this. And they all look at me like, well, we can't. We don't know how to connect to a Mac. Do you have your connector? And I'm like, huh? What? What are you talking about? They're like, yeah, we need to connect your Mac. I'm like, oh no, I don't have it. They're like, okay, well, do you have do you have a flash drive that perhaps we can plug it to another computer? Oh no, I don't have a flash drive. Oh, okay. So the realization hit me that I can't present my PowerPoint. So I had two hours of a room packed of dentists <laughs> talking about marketing. And this dentist who gave me my job, who gave me this opportunity, who's allowing me to figure out my way, and he's giving me a platform, and here I am messing things up, right? So I'm like, you know what? I got this. I can do this. I got this. I, I live and breathe marketing. I got this. So I had them come bring me a flip chart. And that was it. My presentation was on a flip chart where I wrote notes and I went through the whole thing. And guess what? I got all positive reviews on the, on the survey that they collect at the end of the day. And I, that's how my speaking career started. Somebody there heard me and they were like, we need you to come speak here. I need you to come speak there. And that also brought me to the you know, launch of my first marketing company which I, you know, which I love. And I relaunched the first marketing company by breaking a Guinness world record. 
for a record called Swishery Breast Cancer, in which uh, we had, we broke the world record. Be prepared for this, guys. It's coming. We broke the world record for the most amount of people swishing mouthwash at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and we use digital media, social media, you know, community marketing, internal, the whole, whole shebang. We use all the marketing strategies together. And guess what we did? We had over 2,000 people in a local football team, like a, like a local uh, high school, and we broke a world record that used to be held by Colgate before, and that's how we launched the first company. I recently launched my second company, and I am a marketing strategist, a social media coach, and a speaker with hilarious stories of everything that has gone wrong with my life. So if you are looking for somebody who can share all those tips and strategies, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> All right. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, it's interesting for those out there that listen to this podcast or wonder sometimes, let's just get to the point, John. Like, let's learn more exactly what Manal does. The reason why I don't do that is because of what you just shared, because I think I've known you for a while. Uh, it's been so great to to learn more about you and what you're doing. But I always learn something new. Like, I knew you had a world record, but I didn't know what it was for. And I didn't even realize that that was actually how you officially started the likes of your first company. So I love that. And, and, and I think it, as you shared, Manal, uh, the whole experience of, of being in communications and marketing, and, and, and I'm interested in your thoughts mm-hmm. on this. I mean, that's really what marketing is about, right? It's finding creative ways to be able to communicate with the people that you want to work with. And, uh, and I just think it's great and classic, your story of how you kind of came into it. And, uh, you know, so th- thank you for sharing that. And it kind of leads me into uh, what we wanted to talk about next, which is 2019 and all this noise out there with marketing and so many different things to do. And I think for a while people thought, I think I got this. There's a lot of tools out there. I think I can do this mm-hmm. by myself. We can do this. We can do that. It would have you. Uh, that's why I think it's great. Somebody like you is out there because you're helping people. So what I wanted to ask you here is let's talk a little bit about a couple of tips for the startups uh, mm-hmm. and then a couple of tips for the seasoned dental practices when it comes to marketing in 2019. Um, sure. You know, the unfortunate thing about living in today's society is that technology has taken over. There is a new marketing platform every single day. There is new tools and strategies every single day. And then on top of that, the existing platforms like Google and Facebook, they keep changing, changing, changing so much. So in order to cut out through that noise, especially for a new practice. In order for you to be successful, in order for you to just be able to focus and not get overwhelmed, is to know your audience. You should always know your audience. For example, if you're trying to market to a certain age group, if you're trying to market to a certain income level, if you're trying to market to a certain shopper, like a habits of shopping, that's what you need to focus on. And you need to create a new patient avatar. Name that avatar. Give them a name. Make them alive. Tell me how old they are. Where do they live? Where do they shop? What do they like to do? Because if you can focus on your ideal new patient, then you know what marketing platforms to use. Then you know what your messaging should be. And it really falls everything down into place. You know, the overwhelming feeling for a new practice or a startup comes when they want to market to everybody, when they want to create and spend all this money on all this marketing. I'll give you an example. I recently just finished a call with my, one of my clients this morning. And in this one year, you know, I started working for six months, June of 2018 when I started. We reduced her marketing budget by $30,000 and her production is higher because she was doing all this marketing that she did not need. She was just doing it because everybody else was doing it, but it wasn't converting for her. And the patients she was attracting from that marketing were not her ideal patients. So she wasn't happy seeing these patients. So we removed all that extra money. Uh, you know, and as a marketing strategist, this is what I do. I hope you figure out where you should be spending your money and who you should be attracting and how you should be attracting them. So removing that in the production is high. So for a newcomer, focus, focus, focus on who you want to attract. Everything else will fall into place. For an established practice, the roadblock that I see with an established practice is that you know, they focus only on one marketing outlet. They have a campaign, they will say, we're just going to do a social media thing and that's it. Well, in order for social media to be successful, 
the campaign has to happen inside your practice. So if you're doing whitening, you can't just put a post on social media and expect people to call you. You need to make a big deal about it inside your practice, in your community, on your website, on your social media, and continuously be promoting it in a cohesive marketing strategy. So if you have a marketing campaign, break it down into internal, external, digital, social, and community marketing platform. Literally, go to, a, go to one of your boards. I'm sure you have a whiteboard in your practice. If you don't, buy one because that's where the brilliant ideas happen. Go get a whiteboard, write on the top of your marketing campaign, and then put, a, put arrows down and put down internal, external, digital, social, community, and then break down each one of those marketing outlets and say, what am I going to do for this? What am I going to do for this? What am I going to do for this? Once you have that cohesive marketing strategy, your conversions, they just start happening. It's very quick. It's very easy. Um, and, you know, feel free to reach out, you know, if you have any questions on that. But that's how you should go about it. Yeah, I love that. And again, I think like like we said, it, it's more than one thing. It's having a comprehensive approach to looking at all of them. And I think you mentioned it. Uh, they're all connected, but you, you really have to look at each one and how each one affects the other. Uh, mm-hmm. And before we wrap here, would you would you talk real quickly sometimes between the difference between, you know, the purpose of marketing and it's, I mean, it, it serves a lot of purposes uh, in regards to helping make the phone ring or helping, you know, patients reach out to you on social media or whatever the case may be. From that point, marketing in some regards starts to kind of pull back a little bit, right, Manal? And I think a lot of times there's this assumption that uh, if all of a sudden, you know, the marketing team or the person that you're working with, you know, the people that do show up on your doorstep or call on your phone, like if they don't convert all the way through the treatment case and do all the dentistry that was done, that all of a sudden that was somehow the fault of the marketing team or the purpose. <laughs> of work. And I, and I, and I say this and I, you know, I mean, I'm drawing a line in the sand here I, it'd be, uh, because I've seen this as I've, I've experienced it. And I think it's important to recognize, I think it's important to recognize you know, someone like yourself, what, what you do and really what your responsibility is on the marketing side and then the accountability on the practice side to you know, make sure there's a lot of the Absolutely. things that they can do to make sure that they can convert a lot of the hard work that mm-hmm. people like yourself can do to help them move forward. So just as we kind of wrap, maybe just a tiny little, little bit about that. Sure. Well, you know, so actually in my proposal to my clients, there is actually um, a proposal to them that mentions specifically that I need one or two team members in your practice that I can work with and I can coach and I can do marketing strategy with. Because it's like you said, we can make the phone ring, but if there is no conversion happening, we can't be in your practice to, uh, you know, to do that. And it's very, very important for marketing to bring in new patients who actually sign up. It's very important that you have somebody inside your practice whose job it is to overlook all of this. I'm not a person who believes in just giving out you know, marketing to a company and hoping things work. It doesn't happen that way. Even if you have amazing marketing companies that are making your phone ring, you need to establish an individual inside your practice who can answer that phone, who can do that new patient tour, who can close that treatment case, who is there for your patients. Patients are smart. They know when you care, and they expect, oh, my God, in a world of reviews, in a world of Google and Yelp and Facebook that can take your practice down in two minutes if somebody has a bad experience, why even have that, why even give them that opportunity? Always try for the best experience. Always have that wild experience. And if you do that, your patients will convert. So I actually, you know, my way of dealing with it, John, is I, I ask my clients. I literally say, who are going to be my people that I'm going to be working with? I know the dentist is being too busy being a dentist. I don't want the dentist. I don't want the office manager also. They're, they both have their place full. I want somebody who I can talk to, who I can uh, have accountability with, and who can present everything that's going on in the practice. And that's what works best with me. And that's why I require my clients to provide me somebody like that. Excellent. I love that. Thank you so much. And for those of you that want to learn more about Manal, want to learn more about Dental Consultant Connection, you can call 727-447-4756, or you can go to dentalconsultantconnection.com. That's dentalconsultantconnection.com. Manal has a whole page on what she does there, as well as a whole host of other uh, great consultants that Robin Morrison has put together and have you. Manal, 
as always, thank you so much. Best of luck in 2019. I know you've got a full sure. ramp of busy people uh, that uh, that are excited to work with you. So uh, as always, wish you the best of luck. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you so much for having me. And, you know, a big shout out to Robin Morrison. Robin has created a fantastic network with DCC. And if you are, you know, if you're looking to this podcast, but if you're not specifically looking for a marketing consultant, but somebody else, go to DCC. Robin has the best consultants in our industry all lined up there for you. And she's just, uh, she's amazing to work with. You know, she is just a, a breath of fresh air. She's amazing to work with. She's a dear friend and she's brilliant at what she does. So please reach out to DCC. I agree. Manal, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, John. All right. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What's going on, everybody? John here. Hope you enjoyed that episode here on the Digital Trade Show Dental Podcast. If you liked the content, liked the guest, and you are looking to add another podcast to your mix of podcasts, just seems like they're growing like crazy, right? Would love to have you visit iTunes and or Google Play and subscribe to the Digital Trade Show Dental Podcast. As I add episodes out there, those will come through on your listening device of choice and would love to have you become a member. So, Moving forward, want to let everybody know that very excited to announce that I have taken all of my podcasts, Digital Trade Show Dental, Digital Classroom, the video podcast that I do on Facebook, consolidated everything into a brand new company called Dental Cast Productions, doing a lot of the podcasts, also going to be doing live event recording, all kinds of fun things. And we've got a new website, dentalcastproductions.com. That's dentalcastproductions.com. We'd love to have you visit the site. That's where you can listen to all the podcasts. We're also starting up a new newsletter. I'm uh, going to have a lot of great information and content from my guests, and certainly we will only send you stuff if you choose, but I think you'll like it. I think there are a lot of great things that so many of the great companies in dentistry are doing and would love to have them bend your ear and or your eyes in a newsletter for a small amount of time during the month to share the great things that they're doing. So go ahead and head out to dentalcastproductions.com. You can subscribe to the newsletter really easy, and we really appreciate it. And as always, if you enjoy the podcast, we'd love to have you share it out to all of your other dental colleagues. It is greatly appreciated. And with that, have a wonderful day.